I don't judge no men, but I'm gonna call out false prophets. I don't judge no men, but I'm gonna call out false prophets. I don't care. Somebody gonna stand up for Jesus. I am not gonna sit down. And I ain't doing this for the gram or for no man approval. They're gonna have to come get me first before they shut me up. These rooms are supposed to be sacred places. We don't got to desecrate them with entertainment and secular music. The American church should really view this video. I encourage you to watch it until the finish and you will understand why. So much has happened in the American church in recent weeks, and I'm grateful that there are still good pastors out there who aren't scared to speak up for God and call out the faults in the American church, particularly the black church community. Now, let's watch the video. When I consider the foolery of what I've seen in the church this week, I don't care. I am compelled to not remain silent. When I see the foolery of what is happening in the American church, especially in the black context, the nonsense that we pastors keep pushing across this pulpit to unsuspecting sheep that don't hold pastors accountable. With your absenteeism and your lack of funding is how you hold a man accountable. I won't come, I won't give. We clear out. We won't listen to theological garbage. You will not lie to me from that pulpit. You will not desecrate God's house and I bring my family back the next week. What kind of nonsense is that? You don't need marijuana or weed to get black men to come to a church. The Holy Spirit is strong enough to do that. I'm about to speak this morning. Let me say this again. I don't judge no man, but I'm gonna call out false prophets. You don't need weed or marijuana or no drug to draw black men to the gathering. The Holy Spirit is strong enough to do that. What you trying to say about our black men? That the only way they don't come to church is to beguile them with a 20 bag? When I was driving here this morning, I seen a young jitterbug on the street. He had to be no older than 14, bopping with his headphones. A straight ninja like me when I was his age. And I beat my horn at him. Handed him an invite flyer to our church. And immediately I began to pray for him. Lord, the way you rescued me when I did not know you, rescue this young man. I pray before the year is over, since he lives right up the street, he'll walk right through that door. I don't got to bribe him with a bag of weed. I bribe him with prayer and the Holy Spirit. Look, we're not going to be silent. I don't need to feel a sacred place. These rooms across the nation, look at me. Give me this camera control room. I want this one right here. Control room, give me this camera right here, one. These rooms across the nation are supposed to be sacred places where the Spirit of God dwells, where souls can be really saved and regenerated and born again where the gospel must be proclaimed these rooms are supposed to be sacred places we don't gotta desecrate them with entertainment and secular music I got Christian hip-hop artists that can do that I don't care somebody gonna stand up for Jesus I am NOT gonna sit down I got Shondi for that, Christian hip hop. If you don't like it, you can leave now. I got Kiosha for that, Christian hip hop. 
We don't need to desecrate these sacred rooms with entertainment. And we, the American church, need to pray for our leaders and pray for our shepherds and pray for our hearts to be turned. The darkness of our hearts, we who are responsible for carrying this glorious gospel. To all the pastors in this nation, I talk to you like, give me this camera. Like I talk to myself. There's sin in my own heart. Darkness in my own heart. I'm wringing out my own heart before the Lord. What are you doing? We ain't we ain't Christ. I don't care what your title is or mine. We need ringing out just the same. We need to repent. For the greatest threat to the American church is the American pulpit. We are leading people astray, not the devil. We are. And I'm telling all of my brothers who stand in this pulpit, all of us, play around if we want to. The scripture says we who do this should be afraid to do this. We're going to incur the greater judgment. This is a wake-up message to all Christians about the grim realities of the American church, particularly in the black community. I'm curious, how can church leaders and pastors use worldly means such as drugs or entertainment to attract people to the church? You play global music to entice people to the church. You'll need to keep playing global music to keep them in church. Where's the transformation? Many pastors spread religious falsehoods, leading congregations astray. I have some personal reservations with Christian hip hop since it often sounds like secular music. However, if you want to play hip hop, you should choose tracks by Christian hip hop performers. That being said, I believe the hip hop sound does not go nicely with the religious environment. This is not a church sound. Too much noise. Tell, just turn around, glance around your people and say, I don't need all that old off noise. It's too much noise! Tell, just turn, just, just look around your people where you are and just tell them, I don't need all that old off noise. You know, now don't get me wrong, the Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But some of this noise is not joyful. Some of this noise is ugly noise, it's satanic noise. And I need to get rid of the noise. I'm finna mess up right now, so I'm gonna close my Bible and get ready to go to my seat because I'm finna mess up. Tell somebody, he finna mess up. Because the noise, the noise, I'm gonna tell you, it's a strange noise. Church! That's why I, could, I commended uh, Brother Dillard the other night because he got a church sound. Amen. Yeah. Told you I'm finna mess up. Church don't sound like the club. Church don't sound like the nightclub. There's a unique sound in the church. And I can tell when it's an off sound. Because that sound don't do nothing but raise my flesh up. I'm here to tell you it's something going on in your life and you need deliverance and you can't walk this thing out. You can't shout it out. You need deliverance. The world's music aims to entertain, whereas church music aims to edify. The world's music may appeal to our flesh, but the church's hymns, psalms, and spiritual melodies speak to our spirits, bringing us closer to our Heavenly Father Ephesians 5.19 instructs us to talk to one another using psalms, hymns, and spiritual melodies. Sing and make music in your heart for the Lord. This wonderful verse unambiguously emphasizes the fundamental function of spiritual music in worship. God's house, his sacred sanctuary, should resound with sounds that uplift, nourish, and echo our communal faith, rather than the world's transient and often deceiving beats. In recent years, we've noticed a disturbing trend. Churches opening their doors to worldly music. 
While the goal may be to reach a larger audience or connect with a younger generation, we must question ourselves, at what cost? Do we not risk losing the heart of our worship when the music we sing in our hallowed settings sound identical to those heard in nightclubs or secular concerts? Remember that we are meant to be in the world, not of the world. Therein is the struggle and beauty of our faith. We must endeavor to establish an environment that promotes spiritual transformation rather than one that reflects the outside world. Let us not dilute the strength of our worship with worldly noises, but instead fill his sanctuary with exquisite soul-stirring songs of faith, reverence, and spiritual devotion. Let us remember that our worship is a gift to God, not a show for the world. May our music, like our religion, always shine brightly, distinct in sound, pure in intent, and powerful in its ability to lead souls to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Psalm 100, verses 1 and 2, we are commanded to make a glad noise to the Lord. Let that noise not be the echo of the world, but the distinct reverberation sound of our faith, resonating over the skies and pleasant to our Heavenly Father's ears. Let us retain the deep sound of the church, for it contains the song of our religion. Preserve the church's soulful tone, for it contains the song of our religion.